Yeah! What's cracking? Ripping off a little July 4th mock draft. It's only July 2nd, but I want to give you the goods early. We deliver. We under-promise, over-deliver. We typically over-promise, under-deliver, but we're flipping the fucking script this time. And we're doing that with our draft strategy today. This is going to be a 12-team, full PPR mock draft. One quarterback. So we are live right now, but this is an unlisted video, so the public is not in here. You have to be in our Discord in order to hit the link that brings you here. I'm going to upload it afterwards. So you're going to see it as a normal release, and then you guys are going to see the chat pop up and be like, how did I get in? How do I get into the mock draft? You do it by joining the Discord. Very simple. It's free to join. The link is right down below. 12 teams. Everyone's in here from the Discord. Full PPR. One quarterback. I am going Two, draft on the 106. Put the draft board up on the screen. Let's run it. What's good, Jarrett? How art thou? Jarrett's at the 104. All right, so we got some drafters in the live stream, which is typically a problem for me because anytime I start talking about players and they take my players just to piss me off. Tell you what, I'm cool, I'm calm, and I am collected today. There will be no anger out of me. My voice will not raise above a certain monotoned level. And I'm sitting at the 105. We have Taylor, Cup, McCaffrey and Eckler off the board. Ooh, that's the highest I've seen Eckler go, but it is a full PPR league, so I have no qualms or arguments or yelling to do about that pick. Now, we can go with the running back. I've always been a, a big advocate of going with the running back early off and, and padding that position, but Henry Cook, Najee, Mixon, no one really excites me. No one really excites me like Justin Jefferson does this year. The more I sit on Justin Jefferson – pause the more i think about justin jefferson fuck pause the more i dive into the fantasy outlook of justin jefferson the more i like this dude for 2022 and this is a this is an interesting year for the strategy that i typically go with and i'm just going to go best player available the last couple mock drafts we've done make sure you subscribe because we do a new strategy every weekend every saturday we're doing uh live mock drafts with, you know, all running backs or, you know, going super running back heavy, super wide receiver heavy. We're just going best player available. And at the 105 in full PPR, we're starting three wide receivers. Justin Jefferson is that guy for me. Okay. Pumpkin Spice knows. We got a TikTok follower in here. You go zero RB, you get zero bitches. He knows. Uh, Justin Jefferson. This Vikings off, and Jeff Jefferson is just like fucking an, an elite player in every aspect of it. The best two-year start from any wide receiver of all time. The route running is unbelievable. The separation he gets, the speed he gets, everything he does is just mind-blowing. And now they're going to move over to an offense. I really, really like this Minnesota offense. They've been running their offense incorrectly for years. Like the fact that they just keep trying to force this into a run-first offense has always been the wrong way to look at it. But now we have a change. A regime change. We went into the changing room, the fitting room, and we took off our tight black jeans and we put on some mesh, pocketless, BDGE shorts, and shit's going to look different. We're free-flowing, right? We are free-flowing. And Jefferson, this this offense, the pass rate is going to be so much higher, which means just Jefferson is going to go crazy this year. I love Jefferson. I love him. We have Thielen a little bit on the decline. Dalvin Cook, I even like this year because he's going to be a little bit more involved in the passing game. We say Jefferson over Chase. Based on my attitude and the way I'm yelling, what the fuck do you think, my friend? Yes, Jefferson over Chase. Um, same tier for me, but I am climbing more and more up the ladder of Justin Jefferson. The show. Okay, we have gotten almost bike to my pick. And let's see where we're at right now. There's a very clear player that I want to take right now that I hope does not get sniped from me. And I feel like he is going to. Hey, let's go. What are you doing taking Alvin Kamara at the 2-7, sir? He is going to get a six-game suspension. Since this is full PPR, again, and we start three wide receivers, C.D. Lamb sitting there looking like an absolute slab of lamb chops after I just fasted for 24 fucking hours. Mm. Oh, if I could start off Justin Jefferson and CD lamb bike to bike in the first two rounds of a full PPR league the leagues over as far as I'm concerned, I've won this league already. So after I took Jefferson at 105, we have Henry at 106, which is a little bit questionable in full PPR. However, I was listening to uh, a few podcasts. Yeah, I know. I know, Umbra. Like, I I, I was going to say something sus as well, but I pivoted away. Um, 
Derrick Henry, 106. Listening to a few podcasts about Titans beat reporters, and um, do you guys want me to like fucking do this when I start talking again, or you want me to just keep the board in the back? I feel like you probably just want me to be this small, no matter what kind of video I'm doing. Just put like a black background in the back and just keep me in the fucking corner. Fuck you guys. I was listening to a Titans uh, beat reporter podcast, and they don't think there will be any sort of change for Derrick Henry this year. They are going to run this man into his straight into a coffin. Okay, so they don't think they're going to pull his workload back because of the injury. They don't have a true number two like they drafted Hassan Haskins, but they said that the only one who's going to get real work here is actual is actually Dontrell Hilliard operating as the third down back. So Henry's like full steam ahead. We have Jamar Chase at 107, Dalvin Cook, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Swift, Stephon Diggs at 112, and Travis Kelsey. I like that. Um, I like that little uh, pairing on the corner there with Stephon Diggs and Travis Kelsey. You're getting like you know a combined 300 targets, if not 320 targets between those two. Again, full PPR. We have Nick Chubb at 22, Leonard Fournette 23, Aaron Jones 24. Aaron Jones at 24 seems really really crispy too. I like that start for from Isaiah B. I wish I liked Isaiah a little bit more. I hate that dude. Just kidding. All love, baby. Let's see. So this is the only problem I really do see about starting with all these, you know, wide receivers super heavy is that there's just still so many appetizing pieces on the board here. And the running backs are kind of ugly. So we're almost going zero running back. James Conner, okay. Cam Akers, no way. David Montgomery's too boring. Gibson, see, no, there's no one I want to jump up and, and take. But here's what we're going to do. I, I have not been drafting a lot of James Conner. He's not a he's he's a player that for whatever reason at the end of the season it just feels like he's not going to return the ROI on wherever you draft him and clearly it's like the third round right now. Connor's not a big pass catching guy, right? We talked about how we've talked about throughout this offseason his numbers last year were really really similar to Mark Ingram's big year that he had for the Ravens a few years ago where he had about 200 carries, which is like 14 carries a game, caught about 30 passes, the touchdown numbers were just insanity. So I'm having a hard time really really being excited about James Conner when I don't think the volume is necessarily going to be there um in terms of like the upside volume man Chase Edmonds is gone but they do bring in Keonta Ingram talented six round rookie uh they bring in Darrell Williams which is probably even a bigger hit so I, I think there's going to be a weird running back by committee here as soon as if James Conner like falters or slips a little bit in terms of efficiency or just being a good running back it might just slip its way into a running back by committee but I wanted to share I wanted to mess around with the roster configuration here because I know if I pass on a running back here I'm probably going to regret it later on because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of depth this year at running back there is a ton of depth at wide receiver alternatively I could have went with Keenan Allen who's a little bit boring but he's got a great fucking PPR play obviously great PPR um, floor so it would have been a nice start with Jefferson Lamb Allen I'll, alternatively I could have went with Michael Pittman too who I really really like so Isaiah B just keeps rocking it so after Aaron Jones, it was Devontae Adams at 2-5, Saquon, Alvin Kamara. Again, Alvin Kamara is likely getting a six-game suspension, so you can't take him anywhere near there. I took CeeDee Lamb at 2-8, Mike Evans at 2-9, great pick, Javante at 2-10, A.J. Brown 2-11, Tyree Kill, Mark Andrews, Debo Samuel, Zeke, T. Higgins. I took James Conner at 3-5, Josh Jacobs at 3-6, feels a little sus as well. Bo- booties, what are you, what are you, what are, uh, what are you doing? Are you the one? You're the one that's working on your pool, right? I guess that's a you know that's fair. You're not paying attention here very clearly. Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Michael Pittman, Josh Allen, first quarterback off the board. This is a one QB draft. Cam Akers at 311. David Montgomery, Travis Etienne. So we now saw Bugs Meyer go bike to bike on the running backs there. Diggs, Kelsey, Montgomery, ETN, Sutton at the 4-2. So, again, we are starting to see the convergence of those two Denver wide receivers where it was Judy over Sutton for a long time. And now, maybe because you are maybe because you are listening to my dumb ass, you are taking Sutton over Judy. Gibson, you can't do that at 4-3. I, I don't care how bad you need a running back or want a running back. He just he didn't catch passes last year, and now McKissick's back, and they add in Brian Robinson. You just I'm telling you guys, Gibson needs to be like a sixth-round pick. One eight is working on the pool. Do we have any questions out there in the chat, by the way? I'm here to get Q and assaulted by y'all. So we took our first running back. So we're like, you know, we're sitting here. Okay. We don't, we don't need to reach for anybody at that position necessarily. Still some strong tight ends on the board. Uh, we, there we go. We have Jerry Judy go up two picks off after Sutton. I do think in a full PPR league, the gap between the two is, is borderline non-existent. I think Judy can definitely close the gap when it comes to talent just through uh, volume, running shorter routes, and probably racking up more receptions. 
Deontay Johnson goes off at the 4-7. Dobbins, Clyde, Miles Sanders. Man, the running backs are ugly. We're going to sit on running back for right now. DK, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore. Um, okay, so I just made a video about how I don't want anything really to do with DJ Moore. I'm actually going to stick to that. I'm going to grab Pitts. I'm going to grab Pitts. I don't, I don't see myself owning a lot of Kyle Pitts this year. I don't know how this offense is going to run with Marcus Mariota being the guy under center, which means he's probably going to run a lot. They're going to try to run the ball a lot. It ain't going to work. They're not going to be a good running team. So they're going to be forced to pass the ball, but I don't know if I love the outlook for, for this passing offense, but it's all going to be a target funnel to Kyle Pitts and Drake London. And I'm going to assume Kyle Pitts is going to have a target share amongst the tight ends. That's probably top three in the league, which is enough for me to want him in a full PPR league. There's a chance that again, like he had, you know, one touchdown last year, right? One fucking touchdown. Do I expect, does that mean, Oh, needs all this positive regression. He's going to score nine touchdowns this year. No, he's not going to score nine touchdowns this year. Probably be in like the four to five range, maybe six range if we get a little bit of luck in there. Kyle Pitts getting a ton of targets. Like his target floor is so, so high being the number one in this offense. I, I think it's just a position that's, you know, it's harder to hit on a tight end than it is on a wide receiver, which is why I went with Kyle Pitts instead of a DJ Moore or Jalen Waddle. You know, I talked about how I don't like DJ Moore, but he's a consistent guy that's getting 150 targets a year. So in PPR, since this is full PPR, I'm not off DJ Moore at the end of the fourth round whatsoever. It's just like, I think underdog ADP had him at the end of the third round and that's half PPR like that. I couldn't give a fuck less about that pick. DJ Moore, any upside or not? So, I mean, my problem is this, like we've seen what he's getting year in and year out. And it's just, it's how many touchdowns can you score when your shit quarterback is throwing 17 touchdowns on the year, 22 touchdowns on the year. That's like one passing touchdown a game. Right. And now six of them are going to go to Christian McCaffrey. And then you have what 13 spread out between fucking five wide receivers and tight ends and stuff. It's just the math just don't add up. My friends, Ah, daddy flex God, man. Sharp picks. I like C. Will's picks too. Um, really wanted to go with Mike Williams there, but that's okay. That is okay. We will pivot from Mikey Dubs. We hate Clyde. We don't love Miles Sanders. Damian Harris in a full PPR. Avoiding that like gonorrhea. Uh, let's go A-Rob. Let's go with A-Rob. He will be my wide receiver three. And we had a question in the chat from Alan or from Wyatt about a Rob. How much work does a Rob steal from cup trade cup? Now? Absolutely fucking not. I cannot stand the people that are like have to fade Cooper cup because no one ever repeats his wide receiver. One, no one ever repeats his running back one trade. Jonathan, like yeah, that's such horrible logic and advice. There's a range of outcomes. So Cooper cup, if you told me at the end of the year he does not finish as the wide receiver one, that does not make him a bad pick at wide receiver one because he's likely finishing as a top two or three fantasy wide receiver. Okay? If you draft someone at one and they finish within the top three, that's still a fine pick. A top three guy at their position is going to help you win a league, and that's more certainty than anyone else in these fucking drafts. Um, so, no, I'm not trading Cooper Cup. How much work does A-Rob steal from Cup? I'm not worried about A-Rob stealing from Cup because – A-Rob is an outside dominant player. He runs routes purely on the outside. He's a go up and get the ball possession wide receiver. Cup is running a muck over the middle of the field. And when we talk about like stealing in terms of volume, how, I don't I don't think you can be worried whatsoever because Cup's been competing with Robert Woods and some of Odell Beckham Jr. last year, and both of those guys are gone now, right? Like Woods was a, a consistent 120 to 130 target guy. I think that's probably around what we'll see for Allen Robinson, right? 120 to 130 targets mainly on the outside, mainly down the field. Like Cup's always like a, you don't see Cup running fades on the sideline. He's not going like one-on-one with the with the CB1 on the outside and making like boundary plays. That's where A-Rob will come into play. Cup's going up the middle, up the seam running routes, right? Like that's his, I, I think the two players couldn't be more different, but but couldn't be more perfect for each other. Um, so I'm not worried about it because we've, we've always had weapons that have competed with Cup and Cup dominated last year with those, with, you know, a ton of target competition already, so. After I took Allen Robinson at the 5-5, we had Amon Ross St. Brown, Patrick Mahomes, Brandon Cooks, Rashad Bateman, Dalton Schultz, Adam Thielen at 5-11, and we were at the 5-12 for Bugsy. Why is Kittle so much lower than Pitts this year? I like Kittle in the late fifth and best ball. Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Like Kittle's just been hyped up as this uber athlete for like years, and it feels like we haven't got a real sense of uh, consistency from him in a long time, right? And I think like 
fantasy players crave consistency. And it's insane because you can never predict how a player's point production is actually going to like finish for the year. So if you draft a guy as tight end five and he finishes a tight end five, if he didn't do it consistently, you don't look at him the same way. That's like how Mike Williams was last year. So I think fantasy players have a tough time understanding consistency and the fact that you're just not going to get it. Because last year, Kittle had way more games than he didn't had under double digit fantasy points, but he had a game where he went for 35 points, a game where he went for 27 and a half. But then he has games of 3.7, 6, 1.8, 3.1, 4, 3.5. So it's like, get it how you live it. All right. If you're drafting him at tight end five, he finishes there, you're going to like it. The problem with Kittle is like he's had, you know, he's missed multiple games in all of the last three years and he's inconsistent on a weekly basis. He's never scored. Last year, he scored six touchdowns. That was his career high in five years. So his athleticism has never matched what he's been able to do on the field outside of that 2018 season. And now we're bordering on four years of where we're not seeing Kittle really play consistently at an elite level. And I am on the clock. Oh, Fook. The hop just went off. Michael Thomas, Rick London, Traylon Burks. Uh, we have our three wide receivers. So Kittle's sitting there at the 6'8". Kind of makes me wish I took him there. Um, but we are going to... Go Burrow. So grab another running back here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's go with Joey B. You know, I'd rather... That, that's probably a bad pick. I kind of panicked there. Okay? I fucking panicked. Whatever. I was going in on, on Georgie Kittle, and then he gets picked 6'9". Another good pick by Daddy Fight. At 6'9", you take him there. The other concern with him is that, obviously, the passing weapons are there to compete with him. You have Brandon Ayuk, you have Debo Samuel, you have a quarterback now that's going to run the ball, you know, 12 times a game, which just rips off a lot of plays. And they want to be a run first offense, too. So that's one of the other things. It's like, how high can we actually expect his target volume to be? So not only does he need to stay healthy, but he needs to continue elite efficiency at a minimal volume target pace, right? Like the last three years in targets, obviously he's missed games, but 94 targets last year in 14 games. 63 the year before in eight games, 107 in 14 games the year before that. It's like the target numbers aren't aren't up there anywhere near where the Kelsey and Andrews are. The athleticism is, but the target numbers simply aren't. So if you're running like numbers on how this offense projects out, it's really hard to see Kill hit a ceiling here. After Kittle, we're seeing a bunch of quarterbacks go. Um, and had I had more time to kind of sit on my pick here, I probably would have done like some st- some sort of strategic stack where I waited on Cousins, I waited on Dak. I w- actually, I have three wide receivers where I could have waited on the QB1, and the quarterback sits in that perfect, like, typically if I'm in a one-quarterback league, I like to wait for, like, the quarterback 9 to 12 range where I could have got Cousins, Dak, or Matt Stafford because those are exactly where those guys are going um, and then would have felt way better about that. But I kind of panicked. I took Burrow because I hate the value at running back right now. Scott Goddard, Lamar Jackson. Do we have any wide receivers we love right now? Not in the seventh round. I don't have any running backs I necessarily love either. Clyde, nope, don't trust that role. Harris doesn't catch passes. Walker, you've been adamant about this. I will go, Um, I'll actually go with, with Kareem Hunt. I made a video comparing Kareem Hunt and Melvin Gordon because Melvin Gordon's going later. And I was saying, if you're going to draft Kareem Hunt, take Melvin Gordon. I play in mainly half PPR leagues, so that advice was more towards half PPR leagues. I think that with Jacoby Brissett now under center, likely for Cleveland, this team is going to have to rely so heavily on their running backs. And I think a lot of that is going to have to pour into Kareem Hunt catching passes. Like, I don't think Kareem Hunt's going to have a huge role in carrying the ball this year. But I do think he's going to have a huge role in catching passes this year um, because they have guys like Jarvis Landry who are gone. They have a lot of their pass catchers gone now. They bring in Cooper, but he's, you know, strictly an outside guy. So I think a lot of those, like, over-the-middle slot type things that they were working with for a while are going to go to Kareem Hunt. I I could see Kareem Hunt running a lot of routes from the – Run from the slot. So I could see him being a, a good PPR player. As Jamore, Damian Harris, and there goes Melvin Gordon. Dealing getting drafted way too late, in my opinion. Uh, maybe. It kind of feels like I mean, he's been good. It feels like he's been kind of static, though. Um, and he did get injured last year, but he still put up the touchdowns. So yeah, he's probably getting drafted a little bit too late. Uh, end of fifth round in a full PPR league feels a little Silly for sure. He'll end up with 120 targets, especially if this pass offense operates how I said it. I think it will be with um, with the new scheme and how, why I like Justin Jefferson so much. But it, it feels like he's, you know, falling off a little bit in terms of like the weekly upside that he has. Last year, he had a single game above 95 receiving yards. Every other and he had games of, you know, 39, 40, 46, 6, 0, 40. So it's like kind of the George Kill corollary where 
the consistency just isn't there and you you have to continue to bank on the touchdowns which at this point is like you know run all the statistical fucking analysis you want they're like a thing he's had at least seven touchdowns in four straight years like no real reason to think it's going to stop now with the way that minnesota's offense is set up i'm actually really really excited for this offense to see them actually go pass heavy and and get their, the weapons that they should be getting involved involved. Like even Dalvin Cook, more involved in the passing game, is going to be fucking awesome. Get that man in space, and he is dynamite. I'm fucked at RB two, but Kittle, L. Jax fell too far. Yeah, see, this is why it's good to this is why it's good to practice these things, man. Because a lot of the times you'll look back on the draft and you're like, oh, I'm fucked at RB two. What could I have done differently? Like you probably could have not taken Lamar Jackson there, taking you know Kareem Hunt or something or whoever the running backs you like there, and still ended up with Stafford or Cousins, or Trey Lance, or like any of those high upside guys. Obviously, they're not as a short thing as Lamar Jackson, but I think in a one-quarterback league, you'll, you'd will you be fine doing that. The mistakes I keep finding myself doing with these are definitely just like quarterbacks too early, like no reason for it. Like is Dak Prescott two and a half, or a round and a half later than Joe Burrow really worth it? Pro- probably, probably waiting on that. That's pr- Dak Prescott will probably have like 200 fewer passing yards than Burrow when it's all said and done, which is nothing in fantasy. After Kareem Hunt, Elijah Moore, Damian Harris, Melvin Gordon, Russell Wilson, Michael Thomas, Zach Ertz, Tom Brady, Traylon Burks, Dak Prescott, Brandon Ayuk, Juju Smith-Schuster, Dawson Knox. Uh, Michael Thomas at 710. Interesting, because we just saw that video come out showing him running routes again. I mean, I would hope so. It's like two years. I would hope he'd be able to uh, move while in shorts. So it doesn't really do anything for me until we see him back on the field practicing. Shot Penny at 8-7. Interesting. Now we're finally getting to the uh, to a world where Penny's going ahead of Kenneth Walker, as as it should be. Full PPR. Hunter Henry, Hunter Renfro, Chris Olave. Oh, boy. I'm going to take Lazard here, man. I'm going to take Lazard here. We just went off on Lazard in yesterday's video. We talked about seven players that are getting drafted in the late round with massive upside. I'm nervous for Christian Watson, which means only one thing. It's Alan Lazard and Aaron Jones season. Huge Alan Lazard fan, man. The guy's built to win. He has one with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers said he's the wide receiver one. So in a full PPR league, give me give me Lazard there, man. I think he could finish the year with 1,000 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Give me that all fucking day. There's no one else on this list I really trust at wide receiver. I like I, I liked Renfro. I was thinking about Renfro because it's full PPR, but I don't know what that situation is going to look like with Devontae Adams there now. This could turn into a thing where Renfro just consistently goes four for 50, scores a touchdown every three weeks, and I'm like, ah, it's kind of useless. Um, we have Tyler Lockett playing with Geno Smith at quarterback. Chris Olave is a rookie. I actually I, – Chris Olave is someone who's super interesting to me there. Woods, yeah, no, I don't – I'm not going to really trust that. Although the Beat Reporter podcast I listened to said Woods should probably clearly be the, t- uh, the wide receiver one once he's back on the field. Chase Claypool doesn't get enough volume nor any consistency. Uh, Watson again. I'm scared. Christian Kirk. Eh. Since I've already gone pretty wide receiver heavy, although we can start more than can start a decent amount of them. I'm not going to get any of my guys at running back if I wait any longer. I'm going to take Chase Edmonds here. He's not a guy that I I really love, but if you look at what they've put together, right? Like they clearly looked at their roster and said our backfield is shot. It is terrible. Right? We need to remix this whole thing. They said that very loudly by bringing in Chase Edmonds, Raheem Moser, and Sony Michelle. All new backs. So the entire old backfield is gone. If you look at that setup there, Chase Edmonds, Raheem Moser, and Sony Michelle. I'm pretty sure Raheem Moser and Sony Michelle probably have a combined career reception total of like 22 over like a nine year combined period. The only one who catches passes here is Chase Edmonds. So do I think Chase Edmond gets a workhorse role? Absolutely not. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's not that dissimilar from what he's had in his career so far, where it's like eight carries a game, but four to five targets per game. And in a full PPR, I'm okay with that. I do think he has a little bit upside because, you know, Michelle and Moser have both dealt with injuries pretty often throughout their careers. So there's a chance that this running back backfield just gets funneled to one or two people by default. I actually want to look that up. And Michelle's been in the league for four years, has a total of... 47 catches. Someone write this down for me. Four years, 47 catches. Raheem Mostert's been in the league for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years and has a total of 36 catches. So we have 11 years and what is that? 70 something, 80 something catches. So those two have combined to average about three and a half catches per year or seven catches combined per year. So Chase Edmonds is going to be 
uh, a decently okay pick in PPR leagues with probably a little bit of upside. Thoughts on KC wide receivers this year in redraft? That's that's a that's a problem I'm going to have to sit down and do a little bit more legwork on because I don't have a concrete plan right now. I hesitate to draft anyone besides Sky Moore, to be honest, and only if he's like super super late. Juju is like fun and cute, and people can pretend he has upside still. I just don't really see it this is just going to be a monster Travis Kelsey year with I think I mean dude even when like owning Tyree Kill had been frustrating as shit a lot of the times over the last three or four years like how many times did you see you know uh, an alert pop up like 40 yard touchdown to Demarcus Robinson Byron Pringle Miko Hardman it's going to be a spread out receiver core where I could definitely imagine a world where there's no wide receivers on the Chiefs somehow finishing within like the top 18 or 20 fantasy wide receivers. I could see, you know, three of them being from wide receiver like 19 to 35 or something like that, where they all go for 850 yards and six touchdowns. But that doesn't do many uh, much good um, in your fantasy lineups because you don't know when to start them. So in a full PPR league, like I would I would gamble on, you know, Juju somewhere. I would gamble on Sky Moore somewhere. Um, I'm pretty off Byron Pringle. You know, I've said this many times. I just don't think he's a good football player whatsoever. Like in order for you to be, oh, let's go. Damn it. So now I should have probably taken one of the wide receivers I wanted because they're not available, but some of the running backs I do want are. Let's go Ramondre. I think Ramondre has monster upside. I think he is someone that's such a good late round pick, especially if you have a roster like mine. Good pick, Daddy Flex God, deciding between Stevenson and Pierce. If you go wide receiver heavy early on, Ramondre Stevenson feels like the obvious, like real zero RB upside play this year in fantasy football. Cause I'm not going to go as far as saying he's as good of a runner as Damian Harris is probably not, but he's the only one of any, any of the guys in the backfield that actually have a chance of being a three down player. Damian Harris doesn't catch passes. James white. Honestly, James white probably has just as good of a chance of making the roster as he doesn't make the roster. And they have two rookies that are late round picks that I don't imagine playing very early on. So I think Stevenson's got a chance to um, be like a league winner down the stretch this year. So I really like him in full PPR league. That was a good pick, though, by Daddy Flex with Damian Pierce. How many wide receivers? We have four wide receivers. We are able to start uh, one flex in this league. So here's the roster so far. Joe Burrow, James Conner, Kareem Hunt, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Allen Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Allen Lazar, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson. Things I would have done differently. I'm going to be honest, man. I would have rather taken a running back in round two. But there wasn't any of them that I saw worth taking. Like, there's no shot I'm taking Zeke, James Conner, Jacobs. A like, there's no shot I'm taking any of those guys at the 2-8 spot here. No chance. Um, so I don't know if I would have done anything differently there. I just wish my running backs were better because we're sitting here and now I don't. I obviously don't love starting James Conner and Kareem Hunt at the running back spot. But I think I have a ton of fucking upside from those wide receivers on a weekly basis. Uh, we have Kyle Pitts close to the last round here. I thought I extended it. My bad. Yo, I fuck with Jalen Tolbert too. I got Christian Kirk, Marcus Valdez Scantling. Uh I guess I'll go with Kirk here. I think it's gonna be a lot of Kirk, a lot of Marvin Jones. I think those will that the other Jacksonville beat reporter podcast I listened to said the clear the clear two top guys are still Christian Kirk or still Marvin Jones and Christian Kirk. Kirk's gonna be a slot guy, but he'll be the other wide receiver starting in two wide receiver sets, obviously, after that contract he received. So, you know. I, I'm not excited about Kirk, but I think he'll have his games this year. And in a full PPR league, he's a guy who can, you know, he'll have games where he gets eight to 10 targets playing that that slot often. You have a lit 4th of July, Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, I'll probably be working most of the weekend, to be completely honest. I might take a beach trip tomorrow, though, with the homies. Opinion on the two Seattle wide receivers, shit quarterback, both have elite talents. Yeah, that's that's a really tough one. You could see in this draft. Let's see where they went. Metcalf went at the 412. Lockett went at the 9 4. There definitely should be a gap between the two, but that feels a little crazy to me. And if I'm thinking about the two different players, what Lockett around nine four is probably correct. I I just I just have no faith that he has a good year with Geno Smith at quarterback. DK Metcalf, I'm definitely a little more hyped about, but I'll pro I'd probably move Metcalf back to the late fifth round if I was trying to correct the gap here. Um, so he's someone that I'm okay grabbing, right? Like he played well with Geno last year. He played well with shitty quarterback play. Like he'll have his games because he's such a dynamite player in his own right. But he's not someone I'm reaching up for because he has weekly upside. Remember, guys, like I, if there's any anything to take away here, it's that like consistency is not predictable. Like you can never predict how consistent a player is going to be. 
So DK Metcalf will have his spike weeks, but do not let the fact that he can have weekly spike weeks matter in how you're evaluating him. He's going to have them. We already know that, right? So if you think he's going to finish as a top 20 wide receiver, draft him as a top 20 wide receiver, not not higher because he has weekly spike weeks because he's going to finish there regardless of that. All right, we're in the last round. G string. What you doing, girl? Hunter Henry. Okay. Uh I'm looking at damn, did I already take two multiple wide receivers from No, I didn't. Okay. So in my queue right now, we'll just rip through these couple guys. I'll talk about them. I'm going to I'm going to take probably Irv Smith for this 94th time. This Minnesota Vikings offense is going to be fun to watch and fun to own players of on your fantasy team. High passing frequency. And yes, you know, maybe KJ Osborne is the one who benefits from this more than Irv Smith, but I really, really like Irv Smith at tight end. So we are going to roll there. Super athletic young player, obviously coming off the major leg injury, which missed all of last year, but he is bike ready to cruise. We love Khalil Herbert. Uh, the Bears showed a lot of confidence in him when David Montgomery was out last year. He is one of those players that is not going to have any value unless the player ahead of him gets hurt. Tyrone Davis Price, on the other hand, the rookie for San Fran, their third round pick, is a guy who can have clear path to touches uh, immediately. I He's not a good PPR play. He doesn't catch passes. He's not an elusive back, but he's a grinder and he's got some good size speed adjustment uh, ability there. Um, so I could see him playing a goal line role maybe over Elijah Mitchell, but Elijah Mitchell is still the guy there. Jalen Tolbert is a guy that I really think needs to start going a little higher in PPR leagues because, again, Amari Cooper's gone. Uh, Michael Gallup's probably going to miss a significant portion of the beginning of the year. He's their wide receiver, too, as far as I'm concerned. He's very much like Adam Thielen, where he's not over-the-top explosive or doing anything amazing, amazing, but he's like a seven and a half all around, like very, very well-rounded player. Jalen Tolbert's a rookie that I could see having an impact like immediately off the rip and being you know a five to six catch per game guy because Dallas passes the ball so much. They have such a high pace. Their pass rate is really, really high. So um, we fuck with Jalen Tolbert a lot. And this is the final team. You could see the entire board right cheer. My final team is Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, James Conner, Kyle Pitts, Allen Robinson, Joe Burrow, Kareem Hunt, Alan Lazar, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson, Christian Kirk, Irv Smith. So again, this is a full PPR league. So I actually really like the way that this team turned out. Um, outside of not having a lot of faith in James Conner in a full PPR league, it's just that middle ground here. It feels like the dead zone hits way earlier this year than any other year, man. Like all of these backs, you know, Zeke, I like Zeke, but who knows? He might be washed. James Conner, Josh Jacobs, Cam Akers, the injury scares me. David Montgomery is just so boring. ETN, I like him. He's explosive. He's great, but there's always a chance that he's just not the goal line back or doesn't get a lot of rushing volume. Uh, Gibson, y'all have heard me on record not a fan Mitchell like all these guys seem risky in their own right you know so a little bit scary um I'll hang around with the chat for a little longer again if you want to be in the mock drafts next week or if you want to be in the chat or whatever when we put them out on YouTube make sure you join the discord completely free to join down below link click it join yell have fun be nice be a good person drink some margaritas rate them put them in the margarita channel and I'll love you forever Make sure you hit the thumbs up button on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and go watch some of the other videos that we put out earlier this week. Uh, that's going to be all for today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Enjoy your July 4th weekend. I think we're actually going to go live on July 4th with the, the team out there in the office and um, do a full mock draft together with like four or five guys in here. All right. Love you guys. Goodbye.